Hey everybody, welcome to Lamb Living. My name is Holly and today I am putting a little red, white, and blue in my home. Welcome friends and it's time for the five under five challenge. So red, white, and blue it is. I want to thank Missy and Emily and Marla as our guest host this month, but we'll talk more about that later. All right, we're going to start with the Dollar Tree. The Dollar Tree has uh, lots of different styles of lanterns every once in a while, but we were in the Dollar Tree the other night, my husband and I, and I saw this one and then a blue one with some coral on it. And of course, I love coastal decor and the shore living. I had never seen these before. I don't know if you can see the bottom part there. Um, I'm painting it plaster by Waverly in the chalk paint. And the bottom part has the candle. It's not the normal little lights that you normally find. These have batteries. They're actually LED battery. You know, it's an LED light with uh, needs two AAA batteries. And now this top little part I figured out has those four clips and uh, you could get into it, but boy, they were tight. And getting it back on was a little bit of a fight too, but I got it there. And uh, luckily, I don't have to change out the candle because getting the top off was, uh, was a wee bit of a challenge. But the uh, batteries change on the underside, which is really cool. So anytime I paint over plastic, I like to put a layer of paint, then a layer of sealer, which that was uh, liquid patina, the crystal clear chandelier as my sealer to make sure the paint's not gonna come off. And then I wanted it to be even more of a matte finish than that sealer. You can see the change in the color there. I wanted it to be um, that matte chalky finish. So to get it to be more like uh, aged stucco plaster, you know, that nice kind of high-end look, I added some baking soda to my plaster chalk paint and I've got it there in that um, little jar. And I'm just gonna kinda dab, dab, dab that all over and put a couple of coats of that at, to where the star, sea stars there are going to be almost solid. And uh, the, they have little holes in them, and I get why they put the holes in them. You know, it's a lantern, you want the lights to come through. But I went, wanted to go ahead and put that, make that, you know, a so, little more solid, a little more like it's, uh, you know, plaster on a, a beautiful wall. There I go, trying to get the, the top back on. Oh boy. And here's the other one that I got the same day. These are just, these lanterns are just bigger than the, the normal thing they have out. I really love them. Now I'm gonna use this night sky. I've been using this chalk paint from Walmart for the last couple videos. I've been um, doing all my stamping and and stenciling with this color. I just love this color. It's a nice dark, deep blue. And you can see the transformation this little lantern's getting, and that's all it's gonna get. I didn't put any, um, any baking soda in that, and look how pretty that is. And I think I put in a picture from the Dollar Tree. Yeah, there, or there's the original with that shiny plastic look. <clears throat> and now it looks so nice with that chalky finish. It also got a layer of the, the top coat and then I put went over it again with the chalk. This one is the one that really got the, the transformation with the baking soda. And uh, then I sanded it down so it wasn't quite so bumpy, but you could still see all that texture and way to go Dollar Tree. All right, let's move on to number two. All of these uh, in this challenge are gonna be under $5. So of course, with the paint and the batteries, I guess, for those lanterns, I was at about $5, but that was just $2.50 uh, $2 from the Dollar Tree. Now I've been playing around with plastic stencils and coffee. My husband always leaves a little bit of coffee in his cup in the morning, and so I've been kind of playing with it here at the end of the school year, beginning of the summer. And I got those pretty pictures with coffee. I'm gonna use those for the white of my red, white, and blue. But I thought, why wouldn't it work, this same idea work with food color? So what happens is, as the, I'm gonna place this water, this is just water, I've heated it up in the microwave, so this food color will, 
um, dissipate very easily in, into the water. And then I'm going to put that on the paper, put the stencil down, and as the stencil dries, or as the paper dries, all of that evaporated water and dye should come up to the, to, into the, um, kind of the openings of the stencil like the coffee did. And so the darkness of the coffee made the stencil so pretty. Now all of these stencils are Jamie Ray Vintage stencils and I like them because they're real thick and they are um, some type of, you know, plastic. And so they're good and hard and they clean up beautifully and they look new every time I use them because I, you know, wash them with a little bit of Dawn uh, power wash and some hot water. And so, okay, I put about one and three quarter cups of that dyed water on those stencils and I probably took half of it off. Okay, so you probably need maybe three quarters cup, maybe not that much. I was I wasn't even measuring with the coffee because I was just pouring my husband's leftover coffee on the on the that vintage music, and so uh, that's all this is. I have music coming out of my ears in the in our studio room, so I I like to use music to decorate with around here since my husband and I both are musicians, and look at it, isn't that amazing? So the food coloring worked like a charm. Oh my goodness. So basically, this has cost me very little so far in our five under five challenge. Well, we're well under five dollars here. Now, the uh, this stencil, it's of their um, shop, which is a renovated church, and so they made a stencil out of it. It's a two piece stencil, and I've used the bigger part, the main part. Here's the second part. I thought to make it look a little less like just that box with the house uh, image inside. I thought, what if I did make it look almost like a steeple? This little part is really not supposed to be a steeple. It's supposed to go down in between the two windows, the front, that's their front door. But I'm gonna use it almost like a steeple and I'm just, yeah, there's his coffee. I'm gonna reactivate that red food color and add in a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of coffee vintage look. And I was just showing you there, the oven's off. I had turned the oven off, so but it was still really hot. I mean, it was I like 200 degrees is what I like to uh, bake my paper on. I do this all the time. I bake paper, coffee filters, corn husks. I color things all the time in the oven, and 200 is the magic number. That's uh, 200 degrees Fahrenheit, of course. And then um, I'm gonna give them a matte clear top coat with my Rust-Oleum spray. And it was a little bit windy and I didn't want them flying off so I threw some shells on the corners and there we go. I want that matte look, that matte finish, so I'm not gonna put any Mod Podge or any kind of top coat on these. I'm gonna keep them natural but I did seal them in there so um, they wouldn't run. All right, now this Simple Living uh, stencils, another Jamie Ray Vintage, and um, I had done it with the coffee, but I wanted that sheep in the middle to be a little darker, so I'm just going to do it again, and the oven, before when I did that one, that one's just regular copy paper, that's not music. When I did it before, I just let it sit overnight, and then came back when it was dry, but the oven did such a nice job on the red and the blue, I thought, let's do the oven, so I uh, thought that it darkened it up nicely. It, of course, still is a little bit darker in the middle, but I, I guess that's just the science of the evaporation and what's going to happen. Um, all right, so I'm going to make this into a banner for my mantle, and the uh, water and the coffee has made the music, even though it's nice thick paper, it's made it buckle a little bit. So to straighten it out, so it's going to hang nicely on my mantle, I just put it on another sheet with some glue stick there. You saw that's just the Elmer's purple glue stick. And we're gonna put the red on there as well. You get another glimpse of that little top part that makes it look like a church and a steeple. Nice and straight. And then this one, when I get, uh, again, it was just copy paper that I put my Simple Living uh, little sheep on. And so I'm going to use this piece of uh, paper from this music book of Stephen Foster's. And um, I'm gonna use the lick, or, or the fold, lick, and tear uh, technique that 
tears a perfect straight line every time uh, for this one so I can get it in between that little border on that pretty piece of paper. And then I just glue sticked it down and there it is. So I guess my, my uh, analysis is use large stencils, large plastic stencils with small openings. Look how detailed. All those details in those stained glass windows of that church. And then this, this is their transferware. They have beautiful stencils of transferware from England. And I love this one. It's got the birds and the flowers. So pretty with the music, my old Kentucky home. Even though Kentucky's not my old home, it's close. I'm from Tennessee. All right, this is all Americana, right? Okay, the Dollar Tree is back in DIY number three. And I am using this little guy I got from the Goodwill bins. It's obviously some puzzle that um, the puzzle pieces, who knows where those were, probably in the depths of the, uh, the bins there at my Goodwill outlet. And um, so it was a perfect backing. I mean, it's pressed wood, right? But the back looked great. It was a perfect blank. So I'm just gonna whitewash it here on the flag. There's some texture to the color, even in the white uh, stripes from the Dollar Tree. This is a beautiful flag. I know you've seen it. It's in the shore living line and it's just so pretty. Welcome friends with that beautiful crab. Mercy, so pretty. But every flag from the Dollar Tree has that same bright white thread. Every flag. I've done this with a couple of their flags, a little known flag with bees uh, back on the unbreathable challenge I did back, I think, in February. And white, white thread. <laughs> so that white thread's got to go. Goodness, Dollar Tree doesn't have any other color thread. So I just take it out of there with my seam ripper. And then I took it upstairs and with a press cloth, I ironed it down uh, so that all those seams are pressed out. And so we have nice pressed seam. There was one little bit of selvage that I wanted to trim off there. It was kind of a, a neon-y royal blue and it didn't quite go with this particular DIY that I was working on. Alrighty, so there we go. Now comes the challenge of getting it straight because we're working with stripes. Now stripes, horizontal stripes are a nemesis to all us ladies. Uh, they all look good in the store, don't they ladies? Uh, the dress with the horizontal stripes, then you get it home and it stays in the closet because it just doesn't look right in my mirror. It look good at the store. Oh boy, we all been there. So uh, the horizontal stripes weren't gonna be the, get the better of me because I wouldn't put this up on the mantle if it was crooked. So here I go trying to get them straight. And I started off with that one little section at the top, gluing it. Now I'm just using jock glue here. This is Dollar Tree glue with a little bit of water is what I have in that jar. I don't know if you saw that at the beginning. I wrote it on top. Um, this is just their jock brand glue, love it. And it's their white glue. They have jock glue and clear and all kinds of colors. But this is just the white glue with a little bit of water mixed in. So, and this mylar or whatever this material is on this flag, on these Dollar Tree flags, they are a cinch. I mean, a dream to decoupage with. Uh, no bubble problems, no wrinkle problems. They are so easy to deal with. All right, so I let that dry. I didn't even put a top coat on it because the, the glue came right through the, that whatever that fabric is. It's like a flat, I, I don't know. It's just a very thin, flaggy, mylar, I don't know, fabric, but I love it, I'm a, I'm a fan. And so, uh, you know, it glues great. And so I just, you know, trimmed it up, took my little nail file from Amazon and uh, filed it just like it was paper and it did great. If I got a couple of little, uh, little strands of fabric, I just, you know, kept filing and they came right off. And I put it here on my mantle, and it looks fabulous. I love these colors. You know, um, if you've seen my videos before, my, my, my living room has all shades of blue, and my couch is navy blue, I have a chair that's navy blue, and so this just fits right in with my coastal look for the summer. And so do these. Now these are gonna go in my four-year table. These were from last year from the Dollar Tree. Now, some of you might have these 
we're gonna be painting them Snow White, Lacquer, and Ocean. These are all from Walmart. These are Waverly colors. And um, my Dollar Trees here in Glen County, we have not received any of the long stem anything. And all of our, I have not seen anything long stem. Last year, they had all kinds of them. They had the, all the fruit, you know, the lemon stems and all the forsythia and the, you know, gladiolas. I haven't seen any of them. And of course, these palms. Uh, so I am still searching and hoping that by summer, now that it's summer in June, that my um, Dollar Tree will get them. All right, now I'm going to, uh, of course, I painted both sides of just the leaf. I kept the stem green, and now I'm going to clear wax it. And I'm going to flip that parchment piece over because I don't want any little chunks of paint to come up off that parchment and get in my wax. And look how pretty that lacquer is. A lot of times um, I see people for uh, 4th of July and patriotic items using crimson by Waverly, but I like that lacquer. I think it's, it's just a little more, it's a little darker. It's just, um, I don't know, it's just my preference. All right, so this one had a kind of a funny angle, so I'm, I'm angling it there on my soda can. And um, so there we go. All right, now the vase for this is a barbecue sauce or barbecue sauce, yeah, barbecue sauce jar, and that I pulled out of my recycling bin, and I'm using the redesigned by Prima Vintage Labels. Look at them! I love these. I've already used a few of them, but I was looking for ones that weren't France, weren't Paris, you know, and these two up in the corner were both from New York. So one was Brooklyn, and one was some other, just New York, New York, I think. So I went with that kind of rounded one because my barbecue sauce jar that I cleaned up was kind of, you know, it's smaller, so that big, thick, chunky label was not gonna work. So I'm just gonna put my scissors and my remote on either side there to keep it from rolling. And uh, I guess I couldn't be bothered to go upstairs and get a transfer stick uh, out of my caddy. I just um, grabbed what was beside me and uh, one of my nail files from Walmart seemed to be beside me, so there we go. I tried the scissors, but that was too harsh. I didn't like how that was feeling under my, under the scissors. So I went ahead with my uh, nail file there. I kind of used the side of it. I wasn't using the file part, but I will in a minute. Because after you finish putting all these transfers on, I'm sure you've seen uh, me or somebody else using transfers. They're wonderful. Um, you put them on and then you burnish it down with the backing paper. And then I like to take it one step further and you know, rough it up a little bit. Just make it look like it's been a part of that bottle for a long time. And I'm gonna leave that simple. I'm not gonna put any jute. I'm not gonna put any rope. I'm gonna keep it nice and simple. I kept the stems nice and simple. I liked the look of these stems. They didn't have that weird bumpy part at the bottom. They look like they're straight off of a tree and I've painted them red, white, and blue. And uh, so I just found some of my vintage books and stacked them up there on with my uh, lanterns from the Dollar Tree. And I'm telling you, Dollar Tree um, stems with just a little bit of paint and some clear wax. Look how pretty that clear wax makes them look so high end. And they are gorgeous. What a pretty for your table vignette. All right, for those flowers you saw down there on the right, I'm back at the oven. I have one of my Pampered Chef stones, and I have, it looks like I've got tea in there. I think that's tea, some leftover tea, and I've got my blue food color out again, and I am going to uh, put some blue in this. There we go. I just went and got a plastic spoon, trying to keep from getting blue all over my uh, fingers. You'd think I'd be worried about getting blue all over my white shirt there, but no. Evidently not. I'm typically a pretty neat uh, crafter. Oh, now that was the Madagascar vanilla I like to use. And that is going to make my beautiful uh, musical flowers here smell very good. There went some more. And my foyer right now smells so yummy and vanilla. And uh, I can't wait for my daughter to pop in and say, what does it smell? Oh, it smells good in here. And I'll say, I'll never tell. And uh, so we're gonna make these little blue flowers. 
uh, or these music sheets into blue flowers. I got these out of the recycling bin in the choir room. Oh, I've put on an apron now. Thank goodness. To save my white shirt. Um, I got this music out of the recycling bin at church. We, um, we always have the hymns for the Sunday copied for us, and then they go into the recycling bin. And uh, we have copyright uh, rights to do that for the hymns for church. And there it is, 200 degrees. There's the magic number. All righty. Now, these little berry picks, they're called berry picks. They look like little thistles to me. But I'm going to call them berries because that's what the Dollar Tree calls them. So if you're looking for them, they've got them in different colors. But I got the blue ones and I love them. And so I'm going to take all of these berry picks and I'm going to whitewash them. Mainly to whitewash the stems and the leaves because they have that plasticky uh, texture to them and look and shine. So I'm going to take the shine off of them by just doing a whitewash. So I'm basically just dipping and turning and brushing and turning and I get, I've got two pans going. Uh, I just showing you one there, but I have two and I'd wander past them and I'd flip them again and I'd wander past and I'd flip it again. And finally I laid them out to dry and I'm going to take them down to my spray paint table and I'm going to give them a coat of matte clear on both sides. Get Toby out of the way. He doesn't need matte clear top coat. So I wait for him to go over and chase a lizard uh, into a bush somewhere. That's his favorite pastime out here. So I'm gonna give this just a, a nice uh, coat of the chalk paint. So when I'm putting the paper flowers on, that, that whitewash is not gonna come off. And if I hadn't put that on there, it was I'd probably have that chalk paint all over my counter as, as I'm putting on these flowers. Now look how pretty! Jesus loves me. These are some songs we sang. I think that was for Mother's Day. And beautiful people need the Lord. We always dedicate the babies who were born in the year prior to from Mother's Day to Mother's Day on Mother's Day. So that was probably why. Now this little crock I got at my Hello Goodbye. I'm not going to flip it today in this video, but it's patiently awaiting its flip. It's just a darling little crock I got on the 75% off table. And uh, so it's a great little piece. I just can't decide what I'm gonna do with it. But for today, it's going to um, be my template for my circles for flowers, for our little berry picks. And the oven just makes such interesting patterns on this uh, with food dye. I just love to watch and uh, get the random beautiful uh, it really does it on coffee filters. Boy, coffee filters come out looking marbleized. It's just a cool thing to see when they come out. If you ever try to remember 200 degrees and don't leave the room. Oh, it's just, I, I work, I'm working right there. At the, that's the kitchen counter and I've got the oven in my sights. I'm on, on, on the uh, dining side. So I'm looking at the kitchen so I can watch that oven when I have paper in there. All right, now I'm gonna do two of the berry picks. I have four, so $5. But I'm going to do two of them here with the flowers. One of them, I'm going to crumple the paper and make them look like very ruffled, crumpled, beautiful little, almost carnation-like. And then the other pick, I'm gonna keep them kind of big like a cone flower, more of, of a bigger look. Now here we go, I'm just crushing them. Crumpling them right on top of that berry pick. It's it's hot glued on. And basically that's it. I may fiddle with it a little bit more once I get it into the into the arrangement. Yep, I'm just making sure it's sure and all pulled together there. And look at all those colors with the music and the whitewashing on those stems. Oh, I just love using paper crafting. And it's such a great inexpensive way to, uh, you know, jazz up your home for a holiday or for just any day. Yeah, we're just making flowers here. This could be any time. I decorate with blue, all shades of blue. That The color of my shirt is uh, on the walls in my, in my foyer. It's, uh, it's the sea blue, but I love navy blue. I love royal blue, and I use them all in my decorating, and, and, and I use a lot of, of neutrals as well. But I, I'm not afraid of color, and I love to use it. So pretty, I love all the shades. So those were just pinched. 
So I'm just going to place it around, put a little glue, connect the circle back, and then here we go. I'm just going to yep, get it all connected, and then here's the pinch. And because the glue's down there, and this, I have the, my hot, my sure bonder set on the low setting, but it's still pretty hot. And there it is, and that's five dollars for my five under five challenge. And here they are. I just put them in one of my uh, one of my vases that I've chalk painted the plaster color that I love so much, and I mixed in the other two picks of the berry picks, just for filler, just, you know, to kind of give them that nice full look. And there we go, there's the little berry in the middle of the flower. And that one's kind of like the cone flower, it's the open and the less crumpled look. I just love how that looks. I wanna thank Missy from the Crafty Cove and the uh, friend, of course, Emily from Farm Charm Chic. They are wonderful. And then Marla is a, a new friend of mine. She was also a music teacher. Just a little FYI about Marla. Uh, so I feel a oneness with her and she's from the Chic Show and she has great DIYs. And she's also a Southern girl. So uh, I want you to make sure you check out that playlist. Thank you so much for watching. We're just gonna do a last little look at our five, five under five challenge items and DIY I put on my mantle and my foyer table today. Love those flags. I wanna leave you with a, um, a little bit of America the Beautiful as we're talking about uh, patriotism. It says, oh beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesties, above the fruited plain, America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Of course, that's Catherine Lee Bates wrote those words many, many years ago. Samuel, what was his last name? He was an English composer. We put the, the, to the music, but uh, Catherine uh, wrote the music, wrote the lyrics, excuse me. Thank you for watching today. Thank, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Leave me a comment. Tell me which one was your favorite. I love to read them. Uh, and I'm going to read reading from Deuteronomy 31.6. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. No matter where we go, whether we go... Uh, where we trek here in America, we go over to France, we go to wherever we go. God is with us. I love these. So much fun. Be sure to check out that playlist and uh, check out all the friends down below. God bless you. God bless America. And thank you so much for watching. So from the Blue House on the Corner, God bless America. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.